I'm gonna play a couple songs, and you guys are gonna have to like distinguish the tones from me, yeah? The one. Okay. Alright, it's rhetorical analysis. So what did you guys get out of that? Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> but the tones, like, did you were you able to distinguish happy from sad? Yeah. 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 So we all have that innate ability, right? Mm -hmm. To make that connection. Now, I had an experience with that reading Kafka on the shore. Okay. I mean, most of you guys like listen to music while studying or whatnot. I was reading Kafka on the Shore and I was choosing music that actually benefited, the, not benefited, but like it reflected the tone of the book. And it really helped me a lot to connect with the novel. Um, like Dr. Preston's whole course idea was to make, hack your learning experience, right? This is a way that I hacked my learning experience by choosing music, you know, so I can connect with the concepts that's going on, you know. So, I thought it'd be a great idea if, like, we can make, like, a learning network around, like, music and literature. So, and I have other examples, like Becca, and <coughs> she wrote a poem, which uh, I wrote music to. To like exemplify that. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you guys want to check this out, this is my experience reading that. It's on um, it's my on my WordPress blog thing. Uh, if you guys want to write it down. Oh, wait, Do you have an example of Hayden? Oh, Hayden has to read this thing. Um, if you guys want to write this down, D line nine nine one one zero two dot wordpress dot com. Okay. <laughs> to go first, or, oh, okay. okay. This is what they didn't let me read at graduation. <clears throat> Someday we'll look at pictures of ourselves now and laugh at our acne and how we wore other people's old clothes. And how we danced because even though the song was god awful, we loved it. Because it made us smile and it made us feel like we were among people who understood us and were like minded. And they were our friends and lovers and idols and safety net. Because even when we fell, we could look up and see those faces, those greasy, pockmarked, puberty stricken faces that were in reality probably unappealing, but in in that state, we saw in them God. And sometimes the darkness would come and the laughter would turn to screaming, which would turn to silence because things could never go back to the way they were and we knew that. But still, we clung to those memories of walking around neighborhoods in the wee hours of the morning, frolicking through sprinklers left of water and empty fields of grass. But we swore, as we dare take our shoes off, that the universe turned them on, just so we as children would have something to play with. But we wouldn't stay children. One time as I sat in class, I noticed a girl who used to be skinny and awkward and turned into quite the beauty. Her face was gawky and shy, but had turned graceful and kind. 
And for some reason it made me angry. It made me want to punch the desk and yell, we grow. Nothing ever stays. And I can wish and wish for there to be more time. But what's past is past. And the people I've grown to know and love now won't be the same in two or three years. And I won't be the same either. And I hope that through all the changing personas and the growing older and the shaping lives that we will still have those moments in our blood. I may not know who you are tomorrow, but I know who you were yesterday, and I know that I loved you. And in those memories, so long as they exist, I always will. Thank you. So, the way that I wrote music to Becca's poem was to mirror, like, you know, her emotional state in that poem. So I chose chords around that, so like E minor, G5, and some variation of A. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, happy, sad. There's so many tones that can go into, you know, music that can reflect literature in a very, very, you know, great way. I think it's interesting, and I urge you guys to do the same. So, yeah. Cool.